Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I just, there's something about saying hello that I just hate. <laughs> you don't mind saying hello? No, okay. but, oh, actually, I, I um, practiced what I wanted to say to introduce the video this oh, week. Oh, go, go, go for it. Kill it. Cheerio, pop it. <laughs> Today we're making a <laughs> British dish, so I thought it was appropriate. Sure. <laughs> Cheerio, or pip pip. Cheerio. That, that's how they say pip, it. Pip pip. Pip pip cheerio. I've never heard that in my life. I don't know. <laughs> well, what yeah, you we're take making. Over. <laughs> What we're making today, it sounds pretty strange, but I think it's pretty normal. And it's a British dish called toad in a hole. Toad in a hole. We had no clue what it was. We had to look it up. But essentially it's like a Yorkshire pudding, which is, it's, it's pretty much a bread. Yeah. It's kind of like a bread. You put in the bread whilst it's cooking, right? Some sausages or bangers. Bangers. So it's literally just like sausages in baked bread yeah like the bread rises around the sausages yeah i don't i don't know why it's called toad in a hole we're going to top it off with a nice brown onion gravy oh, that beautiful. we're going to make it from scratch i want it to be very traditional with the recipe and i really wanted cumberland sausages well first of all what even is a cumberland sausage it is the british sausage so cumberland is a place in england is that right? Yes. So they're, they're from that place. Yes. And then I also read these sausages are chopped, not minced. Ah. Oh, so what does that mean? They're meatier. They're meatier than normal sausage. Meatier. Yeah. I well, can get around a meaty sausage. All right, shall we get started? Yeah. So anyway, I have... Tell us what we need to do. Cumberland sausages. So first, we are going to prick the sausages. Yeah. All right, let's, let's split some sausages, shall let's we? Let's split some sausages. I was so freaking excited that I literally got the last packet. Yeah, man. It's because, gone crazy. Yeah, there's like no, not much meat left at all. Yeah, because our abattoirs have had to close down a lot yeah. or like reduce how many workers they're allowed to have. So there's just not as much meat going around and everybody's buying it all up. It's fun. <laughs> Perfect. We're just going to put them back in the tray for now because we need to move on to chopping some onions. That's oh. your favourite thing, isn't it? Why don't we do that first? Well, you know what? That would have made way <laughs> more sense. Oh, my eyes. Oh, do you need me to help? It's starting. No, it's all right. <laughs> uh, I can do it. Done. Oh, your face. Two onions roughly chopped for you. Yeah. Oh, my eyes. Woof. You like it like this or like this? Oh, I'm okay. How do cooking shows chop onions without crying? Maybe I've actually seen the science behind why it happens. Do you, well, right, here, <laughs> here's a science lesson for you guys, all right? If you see the onion, all right? Imagine the onion cells are like lengthways. Like, imagine they're like this. So they go, they're like the onion cells. So if you cut them down like here, you don't release as much as that stuff that comes out. It makes you cry. Right. But if you chop them across, like you go like this, Ooh. then it releases more. Yeah. I wonder what way they are. I watched a YouTube video. All right. So what we're going to do with the onions is in their like, in their whole pieces like this, kind of just um, scatter them around. Scatter them around the bottom of the tray. You want some help? Sure. That's how you do it. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. You're trying to do like some nice flower arrangement or something. <laughs> Bam! There we go. See, sometimes you need a man's touch. Now they say sometimes you need a woman's touch. That's very sexist. Can I say that in 2020? I feel like saying a woman's touch in 2020 is like, is that sexist? I don't know. I don't know. Not Everything's sexist it. these days. Oh, I know. Even if it's not. Once we place the onions, it's time to arrange our sausages. Wow, this is a really easy recipe. It is. This is probably the easiest recipe that we have ever attempted on our channel. So yeah, let's put the sausages on. Yeah, some recipes are kind of in a row, but I kind of like them scattered around. Yeah, like on angles and then... So this is the real flower arrangement. <laughs> How's that? Does that look good to you guys or what? It looks, <laughs> it looks pretty unappetizing. <laughs> it's not the prettiest food. I've seen pictures of it. Yeah. But you, you know when foods look a certain way, but you know they're nice? Like a sausage. If you, if you think about the way a sausage looks, pretty gross, right? But you know it tastes good. Sausages are so gross. 
Next is the fun part, aka not so fun. Today we're using. So why would you call it the fun? What? Well, <laughs> you know. Who says I, that? I don't know. Well, here's the fun part, aka not the fun part. It seems fun, but then it's like frustrating. We're using thyme and rosemary, and we have what? to strip the leaves and put it over there. Okay, cool. Let's do it. You know, like the feeling of pulling is fun, but then it doesn't ever work how you want it to work. Don't you think? Does anyone else know what she's on about? I don't know. I love rosemary. Same. You could put two in. We do need some more rosemary for the peas. Oh yes, we're also making a side of peas. Because that's so British. British love their peas, eh? Yeah, so we need some rosemary for the peas, but... Like with their fish and chips, they love their mushy peas. Now, now it's actually starting to look pretty. That's like a real roast with nice fresh herbs, herbs. I don't know why some people pronounce herbs without the H. Well, they, they, they probably tell you they don't know why people pronounce herbs with, with the H. But yeah. It's oh, I like, suppose it has a H, doesn't it? It does have a H. Herbs, herbs, herbs. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Before we put it in the oven, we actually need to put oil on it because we don't want it to dry out. Put a nice, generous amount on Oh man. Yeah. So this is a pretty unhealthy. A nice, generous amount of olive oil? Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, pretty generous. You reckon that was yeah. generous enough? A little bit more on this sausage. Yeah. Oh, that is a generous amount of olive oil. Now we get to put it in the oven, but only for 10 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, we just want to start cooking the sausages a little bit. And then after 10 minutes, we'll pull it out and pour in our Yorkshire pudding batter. While we wait for the sausages, Let's get started on the Yorkshire pudding. The Yorkshire pudding batter is probably the easiest thing that we're ever going to make. Oh really? Yep. It's equal parts eggs, flour, and milk. Oh, that's simple as. Yeah, and like equal parts, so we don't need a freaking like kitchen scale or anything. So you can't mess this up. Yeah. If you're an idiot, this is the recipe for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, then it's so easy because you know if you want more, you, it's like so easy to just adjust it. It's idiot proof. If you're a complete you moron, this think. is a recipe for you. I'll do the flour first. No. Why? You have to do it in this certain order. Oh really? What yeah. happens if you don't? Maybe it won't work properly. Oh, so maybe it's not so idiot proof. <laughs> <laughs> so crack the eggs in here. I tried to Google how many eggs is one cup and it thinks about five. Yeah, because all, all, maybe it is five. <gasps> We're almost there. Let's see, one more should do the trick. Oh, I reckon they're that's five. Bad. Yeah, that's good. So that's five? Yep. Oh my God, is there anything Google doesn't know? No, they know everything. They, <laughs> they, they collect your information. Literally. They know your bank details, they know everything. Eggs going in. Beautiful. A little bit at a time, don't just dump it all in. Okay. <laughs> So once the eggs have been added, we just add the flour, one cup of flour, a little bit at a time. Nikita was like, Daniel, I know you're a freaking idiot. So can you please pay attention and only put it a little bit at a time? A little bit at a time. Okay. We better hurry because the key is to add the Yorkshire batter while the pan is really hot and sizzling. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, this is coming together. Look at it. It's like, okay. So. Nice. I'm going to prepare the one cup of milk. Yep. It's nice and homogenous now. What the hell does that mean? Like even. Okay. Like if you got one spoon of this uh. and then another spoon, the consistency would be the same. You know? So it's a homogenous recipe because everything's equal parts. No. Wrong use of the word? No. Oh. no. <laughs> All right. Let's add the milk. Also, a little bit at a time. Okay. It's starting to look really nice and smooth. Just... Oh, the time's gone. Stop! Beautiful, we finished just in time with the timer. And that's whilst we're filming. So if you're doing this at home, man, it should take you no longer than 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay, longer than 30 seconds. <laughs> right. Get it out? Yep. All right, what are we doing now? Just pouring it in? Yep, so we just want to pour it on the base. We don't want to like fully cover the sausages. Cool. 
Cool. Okay, now you're gonna put it back in the oven for 25 minutes. So we've just put the tray back in the oven. Turns out the Yorkshire pudding recipe wasn't so idiot proof. We were supposed to add salt and pepper. Was it salt and pepper? We were supposed to season it. We're supposed to season the batter. I'm sorry. We I forgot. forgot to, we forgot to season it. I thought we would be able to handle it, but <laughs> I suppose it wasn't quite more on proof, was it? No. It was almost more on proof. We almost My got bad. it right. So while it's in the oven, we're going to move on to the gravy, the onion gravy. And I have 500 mils of boiling water. And we're going to add two beef stock cubes. All right. Anyway, just going to stir that a little bit and get it to dissolve and set that aside. And it's time to chop some onions again. Yay. <laughs> now, how should this be? Thinly sliced. Thinly, so like in slivers? Thin slice. Maybe like this thing. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not even going to look because I know what you mean. Oh, my God. Is that how you meant? That's like the perfect size. I told you I didn't need to look, everybody. <laughs> all right, all done. It's time to move over to the stove. All right, let's go to the stove, everybody. I'm gonna start cooking these onions. So I'm gonna put it on a medium heat. We're gonna add oil to the fry pan. It's a good amount. Well, that's a lot of oil, bro. And then don't wait for the oil to heat. Add the onions straight away. Stir them occasionally. We'll wait for them to get soft and with a little bit of a crisp. Should take about 15 minutes. So now we're going to start our peas, our fancy peas. So to make the peas, we're going to cook the bacon for a minute. Then we're going to add the, the rosemary pieces and crush some garlic on top. And then when the bacon's just ready, we're going to add the peas and a nice chunk of butter and kind of stir it through to reheat the peas and melt the butter. The time has just gone off for the toad in the hole. Let's see if it's ready. Oh yeah, that looks so good. So the next part of this recipe is to make a roux. Now, Daniel's usually the one in the relationship that makes the roux. He informed me it's not spelt R-O-O, -O, <laughs> which is how I spelt it, which is very Australian of me. I spelt it like a kangaroo. So when the onions are looking like this, nice and crisped and soft and caramelized, kind of just put them to the side. I have two, I have two tablespoons of flour. I'm just going to add a little bit at a time through a sieve, a sift, a sieve. I don't know the proper word. Do you know? Sieve. Sieve. Through a, well, we're going to sift it through a sieve. Is that right? I think so, yeah. Anyway, tell me if I'm doing anything wrong, room okay. master. Yeah, right. Okay, so a little bit at a time. Now, should we taste it? Yep, you have to taste it along the way. Oh, oh that's good. Is it good? What? Whoa. Yum, that tastes like real gravy. <laughs> I, I wish you could taste it with me. Like it's really oniony, but you can taste like the, the charred oniony bits. Mm. It's got like a nice char flavor to it. Yeah. It's delicious. Uh, that's a lot. I said generous, didn't I? White girl over here. I don't take that much pepper very well. Right, let's test this now. 
It's good. It's good? Yeah, I reckon that's ready to take off the stove too. Done. Sometimes gravy is too loose for me. I like, like, I like a thicker gravy and it's like the perfect kind of texture right now. It's like, it's saucy. Oh. Is it good? My God, that's so good. That's that is gonna delicious. taste so good. Before we taste it, yes. can I share a memory? Yeah, you can share a memory. When we took our very first overseas trip together mm -hmm. in Thailand, I remember, you asked me what my favorite food was. Do you remember what I said? In Thailand? No, I have no clue. I said, <laughs> I said sausages. Yeah. But at the time, I was talking oh. about the like cheapo Australian barbecue sausages that yeah. are like $5, like super cheap. Um, so my sausage game has definitely been lifted recently. Yeah, it has. All right, this looks amazing. Can we can we eat it? Yes, this actually looks so good. Can I try the peas? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's try the peas. Ready? Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Whoa. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, that tastes so good. And you don't even like peas. No, I don't like peas. That's so delicious. Mm. It's like this delicious salty bacony fatty taste to it. The bacon flavor is like all over the peas. That is so I'm good. Try a pea with no bacon. It still tastes like bacon. Let's get let's get some of this Yorkshire pudding. Let's do a good bite. I'm gonna do a bit of Yorkshire pudding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit of sausage and a bit of onion gravy too. I love how it has actual like caramelized onion in it. Oh this looks so good. Cheers. Cheers. Oh man. Mm. I can see why this is one of Britain's top dishes. I know that there's already onion that we put into the toad in the hole and then there's onion gravy and then maybe you're like, that's too much onion. Never too much onion. That's actually so yum. Mm. When, I, when I saw this guys, I was like, <laughs> all right, it, it, it's some sausage in some kind of bready thing. It's so much more than that. It's so good. And do you know what? What? You might mistake me for a Brit. I cooked it really good. Oh, what was that? What was that? I <laughs> but you did like this. You cooked it amazing. Brit. It tastes delicious. Just stop. Please. <laughs> Just one more. Okay. Fine. Anyway. No, but it's I really love it. It is so good. This is, this is one of the most ultimate comfort foods this will yeah. satisfy you you know when you're hungry mm. and you need certain like just nice comforting foods to satisfy you this is one of the best i've had and this is delicious man it's so good it's winter right now and so cold and this is it warms your heart up this is so good i love it i know can, can we have another bite no <laughs> let's do another bite guys I'll have some peas i really don't think the the look of this i don't think the way it looks does it justice or the name or the name. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go because I really want to just pig out and eat. Should I tell them what we're gonna cook next time? Oh, we'll be cooking next week. So next week, guys, is Daniel's birthday. Yay! Oh, his birthday in isolation. Yay! Can't go anywhere. Can't have any friends over. Can't even have your family over. I know. So sad. So next time we're gonna make Daniel a birthday cake. Mm. Just any birthday cake. The number one cheesecake in Tokyo. Yes. All right. We'll All see right. you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Cheerio. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. And then watch this video next for 25 years of good luck.